My name is Jenny Boom Boom. DJ Michi's here. What up, Meech? What's up? What's up? And today we have Dr. Becky Ellick, from who, by the way, is Wheeler's medical director on with us. How are you doing there, Dr. Ellick? Hey. Hello, I'm good. How are you? Great. So we wanted to talk to you today because, you know, flu season is upon us. Yeah. It is. Yeah. We're seeing it already. And it's super, super scary. So, um, Michi, I know that you wanted to start things off today. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Dr. Becky Ellick, um, what do community health centers like Wheeler actually do? That is a great question. So community health centers as a whole provide primary care and preventive care services to, I don't know, 30 million Americans all across Mm -hmm. the country. Um, We do regular primary care for adults and kids. We provide prenatal care. Uh, We have a chiropractor. We have some mindfulness, uh, whole person care um, stuff going on. And we have dental in our Hartford office. So we have a little bit of a lot of stuff um, so that we make sure that everybody, regardless of their ability to pay, regardless of their insurance status, regardless of whether or not they're documented or what language they speak, we make sure that they can get every bit of health care that all of us deserve. Wow. Awesome. So uh, we mentioned flu season, and I'm sure people are going to be knocking down your door very soon uh, because of it. So talk to me a little bit about your concerns regarding flu season. Um, I think every year flu is pretty serious. Um, Some people get it and they get better and it's no big deal. And then other people, um, particularly kids, uh, people who are elderly, people who are at risk of getting sick, they get sick, they end up in the hospital. Sometimes people get intubated, sometimes people die. So flu is serious um, and We want to make sure that everybody's protecting themselves from the flu, that people are getting their flu vaccines, um, especially this year um, when so many of the symptoms overlap with COVID. Uh, We want to make sure that, A, we're helping to keep people out of the hospitals and out of the ERs unless they really need to be there. Um, And B, we want to make sure that um, we're not shutting down schools because kids have fevers because they have the flu when they don't have COVID. So we want to make sure that we're, we're really doing everything we can to keep our schools and our businesses open um, and to keep people healthy and to save lives. It's what so we t- do. Talk to me a little bit about how the flu shot actually works. Ah, so um, there is no way to get sick from the flu shot. It's some broken down components of the flu virus. It would take an act of God and something else to assemble it back into the flu virus inside your body. Um, So you get an injection of these particles of flu components, if you will, um, and then your body is able to develop an immune uh, response so that you build up antibodies against the flu. Um, You will hear some people who feel a little bit ill the day or so after getting the flu, and that's because their immune system's starting to kick in and it's starting to work, and that's actually really good. Um, people who get the flu after getting the flu shot likely were exposed before they got the flu shot um, because we tend to give it during flu season. Um, So it's possible that you could get a cold or the flu after you get the flu shot, just like anything else. Hmm. I I made the big mistake um, for many years with my son, Max, who I, I would give him the flu shot like the week before Halloween. And he was sick on Halloween every year. So is that just a coincidence or was that from the flu shot? Um, if it was the week before, it was probably more of a coincidence. Okay. If, it, if it's the, you're giving it to him the day before, he might feel a little bit sick, but he shouldn't actually get sick. Um, I vaccinate my kids. Uh, I've gotten the flu shot every year for as long as I can remember. Um, I think it's, it's really important and it doesn't actually make people sick. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So there's some folks like Michi right here who has never had a flu shot ever. Oh, goodness. Come see us. We'll give you one. (laughs) But Michi, why don't you tell Dr. Ellick your concerns about the flu shot? Because I mean, there's people, a lot of people do believe that it's not right for them. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, like, like we were just talking about, I mean, you know, some people there, there are stigmas out there that people just feel like, you know, they get, they get sick from it or, you know, those type of things. So I think that's more maybe the reason why I just never did it. Um, I'm also someone that uh, just not necessarily really gets sick a lot. 
Um, but I, you know, I don't want to jinx myself, but <laughs> right. Knock on wood. If you can find it in that, that cheapy office you got, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, um, but you know, it, it just, you know, it was just one of those things where I just always kind of, uh, dealt with the fear of like, you know, people saying like, oh man, I got so sick after I got it. So just kind of dealing with that. No, and I get it. And I don't personally know anything about your medical history, but you look like a fairly young and healthy guy. Um, so the reality is, is if you get the flu, you'll probably fi be fine. But if you're around your grandparents, or right. if you had a significant other with a pre-existing condition, or you're visiting, I don't know, your friend's baby, you could give them the flu, even though you have no symptoms at all. Oh, wow. wow. So, so that's, that's why, as a provider who's concerned about public health, I, I want you to get the flu shot for that reason. I don't want you passing it to any babies. I don't want you getting your grandma sick. Right. Um, and I mean, it's the same thing with COVID that people can walk around with a virus before they have symptoms. So you can be pre-symptomatic and some people are also asymptomatic. So some people never get COVID symptoms. Some people never get flu symptoms, but they could still be spreading the virus. Right. You know, that's so interesting that you just said that because as much as, you know, I'm a mom of five and I know about the flu and how, you know, scary it can be. Um, the fact that you just um, broke it down in the same way that we've been hearing so much on the news about COVID is truly fascinating because I guess I've never really thought about it that way. I thought about it right. more, you know, I'm giving it to my kids so my kid doesn't get it, you know, the flu, but I, you know, never really thought of it the way that you just broke it down where it's similar to COVID where you can have no symptoms, but yet make somebody else really, really sick. Exactly. Exactly. And I think now in the time of COVID, everyone's a little bit more aware about public health. Um, we see people wearing masks in public, which we never would have seen during a flu season in the past. But I mean, hopefully people wearing masks and keeping their distances and washing their hands will also help with the spread of flu this fall. But we also, we want to take every precaution that we can. Yeah, I do believe though that, I mean, I think that flu shot is incredibly important. My kids, they're scheduled for October 2nd. They're having theirs. Um, I asked my significant other if he wants to go with me to have one. Um, he's against it. He's never had one, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to get him there. Um, but I do believe, you know, it is really important to get this flu shot. But at the same time, with the mask wearing and people are more than likely not going to be out as much as they would be in previous seasons, we might actually have a fair shot this year. We can hope. I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Michi, like I was going to make a joke earlier, but you know, Michi yep. drinks a lot of Jamaican rum. So I, mean, I think he feels <laughs> like that's what keeps him, keeps him healthy. I'm not sure. Is that true, Dr. Ellick? Um, I can't think that there's any evidence there, but you never know. Okay. okay. It might be fighting off something. The, the evil spirits out there. So who is the flu shot most important for? Um, I think those people that are at risk of getting bad outcomes from the flu, it's really important. So young children, um, older pr people, um, anyone who's pregnant or at risk of getting worse infections. Um, but that said, for the same reason that I mentioned, that we, we are all interacting with uh, people in the world, even when we're sort of locked down, um, that I think young and healthy people can spread the flu and we want to make sure that we minimize that as best we can. Hmm. All right. But they do change the flu shot every year, correct? They I mean, it's do. The same, they right? do. It is not. And what they're doing is they're giving it their best shot. They're looking at what they think is going to be the worst strains of the flu for the year and they make a flu shot specific to that. Um, so some years they're like dead on and it, it works great. And other years it still works really well, but it doesn't catch everything. So we want to make sure that um, we're getting the flu shot, but it, it's not perfect. We're, we're still humans. We're scientists. We're doing the best we can. Um, but I think, um, yeah, it definitely changes every year. Yeah. And how many strains of the flu are there at any given time? That is a great question. I'm not actually sure. Usually there's like three or four main strains, but there might be more. Okay. Mm. And it kind of like um, mutates, doesn't it? Which is fascinating to me because even when I was reading about COVID, they were saying that like this one strain of COVID on the West Coast was not the same as the one on the East Coast, correct? Viruses are, they're sneaky little fellows. They, they, they change and that's, that's how they survive. Um, and yeah, they, they definitely, they mutate and they change. So when we develop vaccines, we want to make sure that they're helping us to develop antibodies to specific parts of the virus that stay consistent. Hmm. 
So Michi, are you con like are you like convinced yet or? I mean, I mean, I I I always always been as far as just being preventative, you know, towards these things. It's just you know, I think that now more than anything, I'm definitely definitely more about it just because of the fact that we have you know we're battling not just the flu, but we're battling COVID. You know, we're battling just a lot of these other things. So I mean, definitely now more than it more than ever. You know, yeah. I, I definitely want to look into it. So do you have a primary care? Do you have someone that you're going to go for your flu shot? I, I don't. Uh, as of now, no, I don't. No. You can Dr. Come Oak, out. Yeah, Dr. Oak, he wants, she wants to stick you with that flu shot. Just letting you know. <laughs> we will hook you up, dude. We can do okay. this. Okay. It's like, arm out, get ready. <laughs> uh, so why is the flu so dangerous during COVID, Dr. Alec? Um, I think it, it's dangerous at any given point, but then you add in the, the concern of getting multiple infections at once. So when your body is fighting off an infection, your immune system's weaker. And I don't know how often it happens, but it could happen that you could get the flu and you could get COVID. Mm. Um, and then the other big concern is that if we have another surge in COVID and the emergency rooms are full and the ICUs are full, and then you come in with the flu... Where are we going to put you? <laughs> right. And do you want to be going into an emergency room where you might be exposed to COVID? And do you want to have to be, you know, in a room or in a ICU with other, multiple people on ventilator beds mm -hmm. um, somewhere where they're trying to section off the people who have COVID and they're trying to section off the people who have flu. And, and it's just the more people we can keep out of the emergency rooms, the more preventive medicine we do, the more people we can keep healthy the better off we're all going to be. So with, with, your, with like your expertise, you know, with the flu and with these viruses, like in, in your opinion, do you like, do you think we're going to get possibly like a second wave of this coronavirus thing or? You know, it, it, it doesn't take a lot. I think most people are following guidelines. Most people are not um, gathering indoors in large groups without wearing masks. I think right. most people are following guidelines. However, um, a lot of the outbreaks that we've seen are a small group of people making really bad choices. Mm. Um, so somebody throwing a party, um, like a big house party and inviting people from all over the place and nobody's wearing masks and everybody's, you know, drinking and making bad choices. Um, and then you get a lot of people who get sick or um, people who are gathering for events and not wearing masks and gathering and and anytime you throw alcohol into the mix like people yeah. don't your distances yeah <laughs> yeah they do they, they let their guard down they do they do yeah. i've been guilty of it myself here on my patio i have maybe uh three or four friends over my close girlfriends but you know once we start drinking we're like up in each other's faces and then we're the next day we're all scared you know it's, it's right. an awful situation uh, so i had to tell those girls chill out you can't come over for a little while <laughs> i gotta figure some things out in my life um yeah, how can we keep our families safe and healthy? I mean, I know you mentioned, and I wanted to go back to what you said, something about the schools and, and you don't want the schools to be shut down over the flu, but how can you actually, you know, how can you say that? Because just any symptoms seem to put people into a panic, you know, that it's COVID every single time. So... <sighs> It's hard. I mean, I think uh, there are so many overlapping symptoms between COVID and the flu and seasonal allergies um, and kids who have asthma. And there, there's, a, there's a lot. So I think really, if you, as you develop symptoms, you have to call your doctor and have that conversation. And I know the school nurses have pretty strict guidelines as to, you know, you start with a fever, then you have to go and see your doctor and you have to get tested. And, you know, it might be strep throat or it might be an ear infection, but we need to get people seen and tested and then um, try to keep people who are sick out of school. So if you're sick, don't give your kid Tylenol and send them to school. <laughs> like, right, right. We need to make sure that kids and adults, like you don't need to be showing up to work with a sore throat. Like take some sick time, get tested if your symptoms are significant enough. But I think really... And, and testing is more convenient now. So one of the big, I think, pluses going into this fall that we didn't have in the spring is we, or is we have tests available. I mean, Wheeler has two drive-through COVID testing sites in Hartford and Waterbury. You can just show up during our hours. So you would probably want to call and get them, but show up and get tested and it's free. So if, if you have an insurance card, we'll take it. And if you don't have an insurance card, then 
we're, we're just going to test you and we're going to make sure that it gets covered and you don't, it will never cost you a penny. Mm. Um, I think that's really important. And then um, we do testing at all of our locations for our current patients. So anybody can call and schedule an appointment and get tested. Um, so if you're looking to get your flu shot as a new Wheeler patient, you can also get tested that day if you want to. Um, it's, we, we have options. Mm. How fast is the uh, turnaround on uh, like the test as far as like the results? So the test that Wheeler is using is in conjunction with Quest. It's a PCR test, which is uh, more accurate than the rapid tests. Mm. Um, it can take anywhere from uh, one to five days. Oh, okay. uh, and so. it, it varies, but it's not too bad. It, okay. I wish it was all consistently faster, but I think when they're running more tests and on higher volume days, they get slowed down a little bit. Right. But um, yeah, so it, it takes a few days and then you find out. You get a phone call. So, so neither of us have had a COVID test yet. Uh, so explain to me what the test is like, because man, I've seen some uh, Instagram videos and I was like, well, dang, I don't know if I want that test. That was a little scary right there. So there are different tests available. What we're using is an anterior nasal swab, which is frankly no worse than picking your nose. Oh. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, so the, the nasopharyngeal swab is probably the worst. That goes like all the way back up your nose, almost to your brain and swabs the back of your throat. Um, why, did, this why, one, why would anyone need that? <laughs> why would, why um, would they ever do that? <laughs> because originally that was thought to be the most accurate. Okay. Um, and the funny thing about COVID is that what we know about COVID has changed and evolved frankly, by the week, um, because it's so new. It's this novel virus, and we're, we're always learning, right? So at first, that was the, the most accurate test. Um, and now we are showing that we have really good data using the anterior nasal swab, and it gets us pretty much the same results. Um, you take essentially a little cotton swab, but it's, it's, a, it's a fancy swab, and you stick it inside one nostril, and you stick it inside the other. So if you go to a Wheeler tent, they're going to probably have you do it yourself. They're going to walk you through it. You stick the cotton swab up, swirl it around for about 15 seconds and swirl it around in the other nostril. And then you put it back in the tube. It's really, really simple. It's painless. Um, if you're bringing your kids, um, you can do it for your kid or the nurse can do it, whichever you prefer. Um, my daughter who's six could probably do it herself. Um, it's, it's just not that complicated. It doesn't hurt. Um, they're, they're um, also oral tests that are available. We're not doing those yet. Um, but I know other places are. So, so, what, so what's the oral test? Um, I think it's more like, uh, almost like a strep test where they stick the Q-tip in the back of your throat. That but, is the yeah. worst. <laughs> that is the worst. Isn't that awful? This is why we're doing the anterior nasal swab. <laughs> okay. It's just like picking your nose. We all do it. It's no big deal. <laughs> yeah, if you need a COVID test, go over to the, with the Wheeler folks because everybody else is trying to seriously torture you, it feels like. <laughs> Yeah, we're not trying to take any brain samples. It's all good. <laughs> uh, so getting back to my other question, um, how can we keep our family safe during the flu season and through, you know, COVID? I think um, it's interesting because a lot of people are looking for magic supplements. They want to, you know, spend all their money on elderberry and um, all of those things are good. But I think for most people, if you could take that extra cash and invest it in fruits and vegetables, it will go a lot further. Um, so whether you're buying your vegetables at the grocery store, or the farmer's market, um, fresh, frozen, canned, doesn't matter to me. All of those are whole food sources of natural vitamins that are going to make a big difference. Uh, Wheeler also has a partnership with Holcomb Farms. So on every Wednesday, we're handing out free vegetables at all four of our community health center locations. Um, and it's a really great program. Yesterday we had some extra, so I got to take home some eggplant and lettuce, um, and they're locally grown and, uh, Holcomb Farms has been a great partner and we've been able to hand out like literally tons of vegetables every growing season. Um, so that program's still going on. Um, our navigation number, if anyone wants to call, it's the same number you would call for a new patient appointment. It's 888 three five zero zero um you can ask them about what time our testing's going on what time we're handing out vegetables on wednesdays or um scheduling a new patient appointment wow i, I love the fact that you're handing out free vegetables because a lot of low-income folks i mean 
they, they have to use their money a certain way in the grocery store. I used to be one of them. And I do know that you buy stuff like pasta, rice, stuff that fills you know, your family up. Uh, but you can't always, you know, get those fresh fruits and veggies. So I think that that's just mm-hmm. a great thing that you guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it makes a big difference. And then other things that don't cost a lot of money, just getting outside, moving your body. Um, the more you can bundle up if it's cold or put on a rain jacket, carry an umbrella, get outside and walk every day. Um, if you don't live in an area that's safe, you know, find somewhere that you can get to where you can walk around with your kids. Um, I think that also makes a huge difference in helping to boost our immune systems. Right. So when should we get the flu shot? Um, now, now would okay. be great. Um, generally speaking, I tell people anytime in September or October is the best time to get a flu shot. This year, we're encouraging people to get it a little bit early. So more September than October. Um, my kids are getting theirs next week. I'm getting mine with them. I usually get mine first so they can watch it. And I try not to make a show of it. And then they get theirs, which is a little bit more dramatic. But um, they're six and three. It happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think um, any time now is great. And it should hold you for the whole flu season. Yeah. And so how long does the flu season generally last? I mean, is it into the spring? It can be. Okay. Um, hopefully it won't be, but it can be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it's definitely a concern. I, I mean, I know that we have spent, I mean, me and Michi are very close friends. We work closely together at work. And um, I mean, a lot of our conversation feels like, okay, we know this second wave might be coming. We know that, you know, things might change again. We know that businesses are only going to be at half capacity. Like, you know, these are the conversations that it seems like everybody's having now. Um, so I, you know, I, I am fearful for what we are going to see. And I think it is extremely important that we do get this flu shot just to give us some sort of fighting chance until a COVID-19 vaccination comes through. I agree a hundred percent. And um, I'm rooting for that vaccine. I'm really not convinced it's going to be here by November, but no. um, I, when we get it, I think it'll be a great thing. Um, but in the meantime, we need to do everything else we can. Can I just tell you, and I, I'm, I don't know if you feel nervous about responding to this, but me personally, I feel very nervous about a, vac- a vaccine that they're going to rush and put out in November. Personally, I do. Because I know I've read that vaccines take like three years to develop on average. So the fact that, you know, you've got all these scientists in the lab trying to just figure it out really quick, is scaring the crap out of me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it, it does scare me. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, When the vaccines do come out, they need to be vetted. Um, They need to have all of the standard testing done. Um, Some of those trials are going on right now. Um, So I think for people who are really high risk, like maybe healthcare workers, if if it's available early and they can participate in trials or they can, um, or it's deemed safe that we can at least give it to high risk people, that'll be great. Um, But I agree. I, I, I don't know that politics should be rushing vaccines or science in any sort way, shape, or form. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, how important is it for kids to, you know, get vaccinated? Because I know that's also a hot topic. And, you know, before we go, I just wanted to touch upon that. I mean, honestly, I think it's really important, especially now. Um, I know our office uh, rescheduled some well childs during the spring, during the peak of COVID, um, because we weren't really able to get kids in and give them vaccines and parents didn't want to come in during the peak of COVID either. Um, but now we're, we're putting in a big push to get kids to call or parents to call and schedule their appointments and get everybody caught up on their vaccines. We know measles is around. Um, there have been measles outbreaks all over the country. Um, we know that a lot of these viruses are, are coming back. They're around. We live in a country where people travel all over the world and they come from all over the place and we're being exposed to vaccines or to viruses that can be prevented by vaccines. So for measles, for example, we know it's here. Um, and if you have the opportunity to vaccinate your kid against measles so that we don't have a measles outbreak on top of COVID, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bizarre that we're talking about measles, right? That's bizarre. Right? Like the kids can go to Disney World and be exposed to measles. Who ever imagined that that would happen? Like we, we invented vaccines and did such a great job of vaccinating people that we were able to eradicate some of these viruses. Um, and now they're coming back because people are, people are afraid and they don't want to get vaccines. But on the other hand, uh, some of these are pretty scary. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And especially if you're sending your kids to school <laughs> and they're going to be around all these other kids and some of them are immune compromised, uh, you should, you know, definitely do your part, I feel. I agree. And I mean, I think in terms of my kids, I want them to meet people from everywhere and I want them to be global citizens, if you will. Right. And I don't want to have to worry about them getting exposed. So I'm going to make sure that they're vaccinated about against, frankly, everything I can possibly vaccinate them against, right. um, because I want them to be happy, healthy contributors to the world and live a good long time. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Well, I, I it's fascinating talking to you, Dr. Alec. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. we can definitely meet up in a couple of months, too, when you're in the thick of it. I want to see what's going on. I would be happy to. Dr. Alec's going to be on here stressed out like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> I told you all to get your flu shot. <laughs> Uh, and thank you so much for letting us know. You said you said Hartford and Waterbury and all the different locations are, you know, how many different locations are providing the flu shot? Um, so we have four locations that are providing flu shots. So we're at 43 Woodland Street in Hartford. Um, we're at 855 Lakewood Road in Waterbury. That's a new location. They're both doing flu shots and COVID testing. They have COVID testing drive-by opportunities. Um, and then our other sites at 10 North Main Street in Bristol and 75 North Mountain Road in New Britain are also taking new patients and giving out flu shots. Um, Perfect. Same Perfect. phone number 888-793-3500. Call and get yourself an appointment. And your website, what is your website? Wheeler? I, I believe it's wheelerclinic.org. That's right. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like I know that um, because I've, I've I've been to you guys' locations. I just, I think you guys are spectacular people over there. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Becky Ellick. She is Wheeler's medical director. Thank you so for all the great information. It was just amazing. It's hot 937. All right.